welcome to Plymouth Ice Center for Lake Conference Boys Hockey. What a great way to wrap up the regular season. It's the top ranked Edina Hornets paying a visit here to their rival from Wyzetta, the Trojans, hoping to knock off Edina and meeting number two this season. Hi, I'm Jay Wilcox along with Dan Ficken. And Dan, this is kind of a, a double sword game here end of the regular season but it's also kind of a dress rehearsal for the section six tournament which both these teams will be a part of yeah and it's uh, what a dandy of a game for the end of the season I mean these guys don't like each other they're rivals they're going to play really hard we're going to see a great hockey game not a lot on the line except Reagan rights they're going to walk into sections to do the seedings tomorrow um, so they're going to puff their chests out a little bit here I'm going to watch a very intense hockey game today First meeting of the season was a good one over at Braemar. Edina ended up rallying to win it six to four, but Wyzetta, I think, showed that they definitely can play with this Hornets team, even as talented as they are. Well, yeah, Wyzetta, right, has been two, four, and two in the last eight games, right? And they played a heck of a game at Braemar. Just did a great job playing. So, you know, you can't sometimes look at the record. It's who they're playing and when they're playing, and it was a really good game back and forth. Again, Edina stepping up as the number one team pulling it out in the end but that's happened a lot to Wyzetta this year so they got to figure that out tonight. Yeah Wyzetta uh, on many occasions has proven they can play with some of the best teams in the state including their last game a tie with Minnetonka but they have not been quite as consistent as they would like to be and they'll need to be if they want to win that section six tournament. Yeah they really have to they, they have lapses they'll put together two and a half good periods in that half period. The other team gets that lead goal or kind of breaks something that that opens the game up for them. So they got to, you know, get real solid. Coach O'Leary was real damning about that today. He said we've just got to put a full game together and play every shift hard. And against Edina, you better because they're going to take advantage of you if you don't. Let's talk about key players to look at in today's game. Obviously, there's a lot of good ones on both teams, but uh, for Edina, we picked out Jet Jungles, who has had not just a great season but a great career. Four year player to Dinah. Now that is a rarity at a Dinah. You just don't come in and play right away. He's been a really good hockey player. He's, known, he's not one of the bigger players on the ice, as is our Wyzetta counterpart, but he is just annoying and he's in the right place at the right time. He's got 53 points. He can bury the puck when he gets a chance, but he plays on the special teams. Great penalty killer, great defensive player, and really has stepped up this year offensively and really put the puck in the net for the Hornets. He'll be playing collegiate hockey for Northern Michigan either next year or after a year of juniors. And for Wyzetta, one of their captains, Joel Matthews, is a guy that's uh, come forward and, and really given them a, a spark offensively this year. And I'm talking to Coach O'Leary, he's it's just been one of the surprises that he's been real happy about. Matthews really had to work hard, and he finally started putting it together this year. He's undersized, but he's a complete player. He's figured it out. And now this year, the puck's going in the net for him, and he's really stepped up. He's playing on both the penalty kill and power play. He's got five power play goals. He's really a motor. He's just a little engine that could. So he'll be fun to watch, too. And uh, his sister plays for the, the girls' team, too, so they got a big history of hockey in that family. All right, these teams could very well be meeting again in a little over a week in that Section 6 tournament. But uh, for now, it's the regular season finale. The Hornets and the Trojans uh, will have the puck drop in a moment here on CCX Sports. Leah, did you put a new dent in that? This one? No. Were you texting and driving again? Yes. Hi, Leah. Hi, Dad. Sorry about your bumper. Welcome back to Plymouth Ice Center along with Dan Fick and I'm Jay Wilcox getting set. This is where we started the regular season at the Turkey yep. Trot Tournament. These two teams both on hand, although they did not end up playing this year. Uh, Maple Grove and Holy Family also part of that tournament and we end the regular season anyway with uh, two of these same teams. There's a look at the starting goalies for today. Jack Wolf hasn't played a whole lot. He's played well when he's been in there. He gets his nod as a senior today. Uh, for the Hornets, 4 0 record and a 1.00 goals against. And Danny Frag has kind of taken over yep. down the stretch here for Wyzetta. He's been solid for the Trojans. He has uh, split some time with Trevor Wrong, but uh, Fraga seems to be the guy right now for Wyzetta. 
Coach O'Leary basically said that's it. He wanted to take the pressure off him or put the pressure on, depending on how Danny handled it. But he's declared him as the man, so he's going to get it for the rest of the season until they're out or until the season ends in the big game. Ben Ludke will face it off against Mason Nevers here to get started this afternoon, and the Hornets control the draw. We are underway here in Plymouth. Pass onto the tape there of Mason Nevers taking a shot that goes off the end boards. JV game was a good one, a physical cool. game and a well played 1 1 game, and we'll uh, look for more of the same here on the varsity level. Knocked back into the Trojan zone here, picked up by Tommy Bergsland. Gets the return there from Carson Peters as the Dinah taking the body, and we're going to have a penalty on that heavy hit. It's going to be a rough as. Uh, Peters getting up a little bit slowly for Wyzetta as he paid the price there, but it's going to be a roughing penalty against Michael Shoemaker of the Hornets. Little over exuberance here in that hit, and uh, that was a big hit because Carson Peters is not a small guy, and he took it took a real hard hit. So Wyzetta this year, Jay, actually one of the bright spots has been their power play. It's been very good. It's operating at about. 30% uh, right now, which is a very good number for the power play. Very early chance here, only 32 seconds into the game. The Hornets take a penalty. And they get to it and get it on out. So Fraga will come out to stop this one. Was has at 26 goals and 84 power play attempts this year, and it's been one of the steady parts of the game that's helped them get off to Schneid on a few of them. Peters trying to chop it in. Liam Malmquist able to block that one. And now flicked into the zone by Luke Monet for Wyzetta. Hornets get there. Can't quite get it out. Matthews able to block it down. Then he gets a nice little pass from Bergsland. Matthews looking behind the net. And they bring it around to Peters. High shot thrown netward there. Wolf will glove it and hang on and we'll get a draw in the Edina zone. Get a good glimpse of the Adina penalty kill. They were very, very tight, not giving any space whatsoever, and being very aggressive on the penalty kill. The number one in either of the Trojans here. Good puck movement, although Edina, that's the thing, when you skate so well, you can yep. pressure the points. And uh, they were able to do so there. Banged around, Kyle Mortensen sending it back down deep. It comes off the back of the net. Hit thrown there by Jake Boltman. Trojans keep possession though. Their second power play unit out there now. And a shot into the midsection of Wolf there off the stick of Ben Ludke there for Wyzetta. 44 to go in the power play for the Trojans. Not a whole lot developing out of it yet. I mean, they got, oh, yeah. they got, they got set up. They moved the puck a little bit, but Edina's done a nice job of staying in their box and uh, keeping things out. Now, if you notice, it came right back to their first power play unit now. Bergsland's shot was denied there by Jungles, who got out to him, and then lifted on out by Mike Borlicki. Fraga sending it ahead. No icing here, but Edina will get there first as Mason Reiners and had it taken away, and here are the Trojans trying to capitalize on forcing that little turnover down low. 15 to go in the man advantage for Wyzetta. And to come back to the point, and then nice return to Matthews. Into the circle he comes, drops it down low, then they put it on net, and Wolf really got caught back in his net quite a ways there. I don't think he was really expecting a shot there, and, a, and it may very well have been a pass, but watch how far back into the net Wolf is here, and this puck nearly gets to the goal line. Almost slips under the pads, and you notice why Zeta now, instead of shooting from the point, they're bringing it out to the point, opening the hole, and getting it back to the guy in the midboards. Midboards is where the opening is with the Adina defense box stretched out so far. Turn around, try here. Now the puck loose alongside the net. Penalty time is over. But the Trojans maintain possession here in the Adina zone. Maybe not for long, though. Brought ahead there by Grant Morton and in behind the YZ net. Picked up by Michael North. Takes a check. 
Trojans get it back. Pass a little off target, but they still get it out. And Ooh. carried in by Wagi, and then he goes down after the offside call, and the officials quick to jump in. And Wagi back and forth with Grant Morton a little bit there. Kind of get the idea the guy don't like each other very much. You know, they're going to throw the body around as much as they can. This should be a very intense game, intense late conference rivalry. Flipped into the Dinah zone here. Borlicki sending it up the right wing and deflected in by Jackson Borst. Rag out to stop it. Thrown high off the glass there. And the Hornets able to keep it in. It, that puck then dumped to the corner. Nice job to win it cleanly in behind the net there for Wyzetta by the defenseman Mortensen. Now Trojans get it to center and deflected in by Ludke for Wyzetta. Nice job to stop it along the wall there by Schneider, but then the Hornets able to get it for Licky. Dropping it over there to Jackson Borst. He'll get it in deep and head off on a change. No score on the board. We've played about four minutes of hockey so far. Edina has killed off one penalty already. And this one going to be an icing call there. Monet protesting. But the guy who touched the puck there was not across the red line. He was on the wrong side. You know, it's interesting to note that Edina, although they're scoring five goals a game, they actually have a goals against of 1.90. Their defense is very good. They let, allow less than two goals a game, which is in this time period, Joe, is, is a remarkable feat. Well, it's always, you know, you, you have a tendency to get caught up in the teams that can really skate and really move the puck and score goals. And that's obviously a huge part of hockey, but also, you know, Edina just solid all the way around. Mm -hmm. they, they play. Good system hockey, but they're also very skilled, really, throughout their lineup too. So, and, and I think in some ways that is something that's helped to set them apart a little bit more. Again, these last few years is that they have become really good defensively, as well. Uh, Coach Giles made a point of talking about that before the game too. If you're solid defensively, you can win any game, and they're showing it. They said it too is dumping the puck in the zone more often. They don't really carry it in that much because that defense just gives them no room to move. Puck just came out, so the Trojans have to clear the zone. Picked up here by Boltman. He plays it around the defenseman. Fraga likes to get out and move around out there, and he came out and cleared that puck away from Boltman. Wagi back to play it here for Wyzetta. Boltman intercepting there, but that pass did not connect, and it's going to be an icing call against the Hornets. No shots on goal yet for Edina and just three for Wyzetta as you get a look at Kurt Giles the Hornets leader and a long time North Star defenseman 20 years. Wow just that's a long time you don't see that very often. He's, it's gone by fast. Pass ahead there got away from Shoemaker he'll give chase though. Gets to it behind the net, flicked it right out front, but nobody able to get a stick on it for the Hornets initially, anyway. Boltman shot. That one is deflected wide by Jack Seaman. Pass tipped on the way out and is going to be an icing call against Wyzetta. So we will come back into the Trojan zone as you get a look at Pat O'Leary and then the. Uh, uh, Strong job, you know. They're kind of from different eras, obviously. Mm -hmm. Pat's quite a bit younger than Kurt, but uh, he's done a strong job with this program. I mean, you're looking up on their wall, and they've been section champions, you know, three times here in uh, in this decade. State championship involved, and you know, surprisingly enough, from being different eras, they both are, are defensive gurus. They they appreciate defense. As that has always played good defense since O'Leary got here, and it's it's led to their success. I always thought it was interesting and obviously a lot of players have this where Pat O'Leary in high school was a big time scorer for Armstrong when he played for the University of Minnesota he had to really be a two way player he wasn't going to be the, you know the guy scoring a million goals and playing on the first line but he, he worked hard at his defensive game and uh, you know was a, a key component on a championship team for them. Huge and that team knew how to play defense that's why they won the national championship. 
New York collision there for Wyzetta. They were lucky Dinah was changing up lines or there was nobody there to immediately jump the puck. Nice interception nice. there by Michael North after the turnover. Dumped down deep here. Luke Fairchild up with it for Wyzetta, but the centering pass knocked down by Mason Reiners. Reiners gets it in on the second try there. Fraga with the stop. Check freed the puck up there. Mark Overman. And a heavy hit delivered by Hayden Davison of Wyzetta, but puck pulled off the wall here. Didn't quite get a shot away though. That Chorsky, now they put it out front, but jabbed away from Kevin Delaney. Relayed back around now. Liam Malmquist is trying to put it out front. Edina starting to put on a little bit of pressure. Not really in terms of getting great shots on yet, but they've started to get the puck in the offensive zone a little more and get it cycled around. And a turnover here, though. Ledke leading the rush the other way for Wyzetta. Hornets got back nicely, though, to really take away any early opportunity there. Ledke picks it up, keeps possession in traffic here. Now firing from the circle and it's up into the netting as it got a wolf got a piece of that one here interesting start to this game Dan we're seeing both teams kind of establishing what they do a little bit better Edina a little more of a speed game a little more looking for things off the rush whereas he why uh, likes to forecheck get that puck in deep. Yeah by Edina is a much better transition team they'll come at you real fast once they get the puck but boy they really shut it down in the defensive zone don't they my gosh. Shoemaker looking to the middle there. That one punched out of there by Bergsland. Rudke sends it in deep. Controlled by Vorlicki. That pass taken away. More turnovers probably than both teams would like. You know, some of it's forced by the other team, but maybe a little bit jacked up here for this afternoon game. There's been, you know, not, not as crisp a passing at times as you might think. I find it interesting too as the late conference season goes on the scores tend to get a little lower and a little lower between Minnetonka Dine and Wazetta because they just you know they start working on that defensive end of things as they get sharp and uh, uh, we're seeing that today. And you know the other factor too is you know each other so well by oh. this time too. I mean sure. some of the things that might work the first time probably don't work the second time. Mm -hmm. I'm ready for that. I made an adjustment. Uh -oh. oh nice interception here and a goal. Oh, beautiful. Whoa. Got a piece of it, but not quite enough to keep it out. A bad turnover cost the Hornets right there. And Hayden Davison, the sophomore, makes him pay. Just come on the ice and caught that one just inside the blue line, and he puts it away for his second goal of the season. Boy, you love to see it when the sophomores step up, but jumped up on a, a gift. Really bad miss on the play there by 11 on the Dinah. And they just came in and just rifled it real quick. He got it off quick, and that's why Wolf was kind of surprised by it. Nice goal by the Trojans. Make a pay for the turnover. Yeah, I just I want to make one more point, Jay, too, about these two coaches where they they both came in and revitalized both these programs, and throughout their tenure, both these teams have been consistently good. And always in the top five or ten of the state state rankings and you know there's been some state championships that have come because of these coaches. Davison getting the unassisted goal there and I, I, I agree I think you're right that he got that puck away so quick that Wolf was a little bit fooled by it. I'm sure that uh, Jack could probably tell you I should have had that one but got a piece of him and got through. Down low there Ooh, and a nice recovery to get it out there by Joe Tomzik but the Hornets putting pressure on. And back to center Boltman that's offside is actually trying to leave the zone was Mark Overman got puck hit his skate so here they face off coming up outside the blue line here 709 to go in the first why now leading it one nothing on the goal by Hayden Davison.
And that's going to be an icing call. Boltman was just shy of the red line, and sometimes I think he, he had, <laughs> I think he expected that they'd say, "Well, we'll give the benefit of the doubt." It was pretty close, but it really was not over the red line yet, and correctly called an icing. Hornets bringing around here toward Delaney. Delaney flicking the pass ahead. Oh, and it gets through there to Brett Chorsky. Chorsky up the left side, trying to go to the front. Frag out poke check. Then it slammed wide on the rebound try. Back out to Boltman out high. Throws it toward the net, but picked off there. Led keep looking left, a little out in front of Jack Siemens. Now the Trojans able to free it up, but they were changing on D, so the pass back to the point went to no one. And gathered in here by Peters. And then deflected in by Siemens for YZ. Back first, Gunnar Johnson. And taken away here by Matthews. Trojans bringing it in here, three on three. Matthews putting it out front, and oh. again, what a beauty it is! Beautiful. Kimlinger will put it away for YZ. Great play by Matthews too to get the puck to him. Just got it down deep about halfway into the zone and pulled the defense over. And Kim was all by himself and made a beautiful move. Went left, brought it back right, and got in on the backhand on Wolf and just beat him. Right here's the play. Matthews made a nice pass to Kimler by himself and just made a nice move there. Just used his head in front of the net and beat Wolf for this two nothing lead. Well, we see why Matthews has a 33 assists this season based on that one. And a great, uh, when you can put a great pass together with a great move on the goaltender, that's going to be a tough combination to stop. Yeah. You know, the other thing I'm noticing too is how Wyzetta knows how to play in this, in their rink. They, they tend to spread it out better, move the puck in, in big squads here. We've seen a lot of tip ins from their own zone to a forward up inside the neutral zone, just tipping it in. Drop pass there. Now Davison coming back the other way and a big collision at the blue line. And first read they didn't give Matthews an assist which is obviously an error there as uh, yeah. he, he made the play that set it up. Here's jungles now controlling for Edina. Hornets don't find themselves trailing two nothing very often this season so they'll have to be battling back a little bit of a sluggish start for them. Now flicked in by Jungles. Fraga will stop it, send it back the other way toward Kyle Mortensen. Pass across here to Tomzik. And then a little too far. But he couldn't get to it. Icing call against the Trojans with 4.43 to go here in the first. And a good start for the home team. By Zeta up 2 0 on top ranked Edina. Well, you can obviously tell the Trojans aren't wallowing in a 2 4 and 2 record over the last eight games. They've come out to play today, and there you got the goal, second goal scorer there, Jack Kimmelinger. Hornets win the draw here. Borlicki trying to thread that one through traffic, and the rebound comes to the other side. Knocked away from Peter Colby, now thrown back out to center, chopped back in. And nice pass ahead there to Monet. Over to Kimlinger, firing. Wolf the save. Wow, he was tested one more time there as Kimlinger got a good attempt away. Boy, as far as quality chances, the Trojans have definitely had the vast majority of them in this game. All right, I don't know that they've really had even one really good opportunity yet. I, I'm kind of surprised you they got five shots on goal. I'm trying to count where they came from, or six. Malmquist getting in the head there to Chorsky. Oh, there's a good try and a goal on the rebound, and he Dinah on the board. So just when we're saying they hadn't done a lot, Malmquist able to sweep that rebound in after a nice stop by Frag on the initial opportunity. And again, good play by Chorsky. Really set that situation up really nice. That big tall lanky. Body he's got. They're gonna move here. And Brinkman comes back on the back and forcing Fraga to make a big save and out of position. 
And Malmquist comes in and he buries it. That's a diner for you. You think you got him sitting low and they'll just strike like lightning. That's how you score five goals a game, Jay, right there. Chorsky and Boltman get the assist on the goal by Malmquist, his 22nd of the season. Comes at 13 14 to all of a sudden tighten it up to a two to one game. And Hornets putting the pressure on again here. Boltman dropping it down low. Chorsky fights off a check, getting to the middle. Chorsky fires low, and Fraga going to make a nice glove catch. And another shot. Save, save again by Fraga. Puck loose, thrown out front. And another long one thrown, and Fraga will deflect it with the stick. Boy, I think Edina was a little bit fired up by Wyzetta getting that second goal. All of a sudden, they've had their best three or four shifts in a row here. And look at Chorsky. Chorsky, a big, tall guy, maybe not as fast as a few of the Hornets, but really having a couple of great shifts well, that, in a row. That reach, jeepers, a guy can reach halfway to Canada, for heaven's sakes. And just really knows how to move the puck and has been a real catalyst here for the Hornets here in the last few minutes. Matthews carrying it in and a shot from out high on the right side is gloved by Wolf and we'll get a face off in the Dyna zone here. The other night we got a good chance to see Chorsky's sister as the Dyna played was that in the girls section semis and you know she's long tall and lanky too. Liam Malmquist brother Dylan plays for Notre Dame. Nevers nice dish to the left side and then they go back for Nevers and then a shot attempt blocked as Shoemaker was the third forward in there and he got an attempt but it was knocked down. Now Jungle's trying to free it up in behind. Ooh, and Frag has to fight that one off off of the stick of Shoemaker. Now another try. Puck loose as they throw it out front. It winds up in, but no goal. Whistle down before it crosses the goal line. Edina protesting a little, not a lot. I mean, clearly the whistle had blown. Uh, Jungle's is kind of saying, why? <laughs> About two minutes ago, I mentioned the fact that I don't know why Dinah had 20, had six shots. They now got 14 in those two minutes. You see, eventually it squirted out, but Fraga did have it covered for uh, a period of time there, and I think I don't think he could argue much with uh, that whistle blowing there. I think he's he's going to be a little sore with all the stretching he's had to do, going one side to the next. The guy has changed directions on these shots and he's had to be really sharp just to get a glove or a leg pad on it. Well you almost get the feeling that in the Dyna bench they said all right that's enough let's go now because they have been so much better these last uh, three four minutes than they had been the previous part of the first period. Well there's a reason they're number one. And I think it was you know big for them too to get that goal before the period ended. So that you know, it's just a two-to-one game now. You're, you're not you're not worrying too much about anything here at this point, especially with as many chances that they've been able to put together these last uh, few minutes. And for Wyzetta, you don't love it, but I think it's good that you have to learn to be able to fight off a barrage like this when you're talking about section time, because it might come from this team or a couple of the other good ones in section six. Well, I think what Coach O'Leary wants to see is the response now that that they're giving. They've had this issue. They're going to get up, and then the other team scores a goal, and then they score another one, and things start falling apart quick. So they need to stabilize, weather the storm, like you said, Jay. It was a really good point, and uh, we'll see if they can get out of this period with a score of two to one. Ooh. Uh, just offside. Ooh. Obviously, the puck was in the air, so it makes it even a little tougher call. Michael North gloving it down, bringing it in, but uh, Linesman is right there looking and. Ruled that that puck had crossed over the plane of the blue line up uh, six feet in the air or so there. We'll be speaking with both coaches here in the intermissions. Pat O'Leary up first for Wyzetta. We're under a minute to go in this first period. It's been a good one. A little bit of a slow start, but we've had uh, some great action after that. Wyzetta scoring the first two goals less than two minutes apart and then Edina really coming on strong getting a goal of their own and a couple other near misses after that. Yeah storm the net time right boy. Good experience for young Mr. Wolf here as they go through the sections they never know when you might have to step up to the plate. 
Yeah, loud and hard. The sophomores play the majority of their games, and you got to believe mm -hmm. he'll be the guy in the sections. But Wolf, uh, maybe that first goal he'd like to have back, but he's been tested some too beyond this the uh, the two goals, and and obviously, uh, you know, to to play in a good program like theirs, you got to be pretty good just to even make the varsity. Oh yeah. So, to get a start in this spot uh, says they have some confidence in him. And I'll tell you, a hog though as a sophomore to make the varsity be the, be the man most of the time, and he's pretty good goaltender. Back out to the point. They look for the chip from Malmquist, and the shot goes wide. In behind the net. High centering pass here. Hornets putting together some offense oh. late in the period. Great oh. fake and pass out front. Jungles, though, had been knocked down by Matthews and wasn't quite able to get in position to receive that puck. Whether it was legal or not, eh. But uh, he wound up down on the ice and will tick down to zero now. And the period comes to an end. And a good period. It's two to one YZ after one. We'll be back with more of our live coverage here of Lake Conference Hockey on CCX. What makes your community feel like home? Is it knowing what's happening in your neighborhood? or when people know your name. Connections make us a community. For more than 30 years, Northwest Community Television has connected citizens, neighbors, even sports fans through video. As life gets busier than ever, we will still offer you a connected community experience through CCX Media, so you can stay connected to the place you call home. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button and from there choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Welcome back here to Plymouth Ice Center. Wyzetta leading Edina by a two to one score after one period. Pat O'Leary, the Trojans head coach, joins us. And uh, Pat, pretty entertaining first period. How'd you feel your club played in that first? Well, obviously we came out playing well. Uh, a couple goals for, you know, early. And uh, like I said before the game, it was gonna be a fast and physical game. And, you know, they had a push back there. Obviously, that's why they've won 19 or 20 games or whatever it is. And, uh, you know, they just got to keep playing. and. You know, win every period, you know, and just keep being physical and get pucks to the net and hopefully some more can go in for us. You guys were able to take advantage of some turnovers there. Was that something that uh, you concentrated on in the neutral zone, playing it that way a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I mean, especially, like, you know, just like from the top of their circles in, into their blue, to their blue line, it's, if you, if you can't keep pucks in right there, if you're making bad reads, I mean, they're coming the other way three on two all night long. That's how they play for years. Um, so, yeah, we've definitely been talking over the last couple of weeks of, you know, kind of our third man's the most important guy on the ice, allows our defensemen to be physical and, you know, and stay up in the play and, um, you know, kind of staying on your toes. So, you know, that happened, and Davidson was there for it and picked it, and, you know, put in the net, so that was nice. Danny wasn't tested all that much in the first part of the period, but boy, the last few shifts were, uh, were they were throwing everything at him. Uh, did you expect that out of Edina, though? I mean, you, a tribute to that, you know, it's getting a power play in the first minute or so, obviously. So, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things, it's like, do you want him to get three or four big saves in the first minute or so to get him dialed? But maybe some of those go in, too, so it's, you know, kind of two ways to look at it. But yeah, I mean, he knows it's got to be focused, you know, for the whole period. And even in the last, you know, 30 seconds there, they had a nice grade A, and he made that save. So it's got, you know, between the, between the whistles, you got to be ready to go against these guys. This one really kind of feels like a playoff atmosphere. Is this a good way to end the regular season to have you guys ready? Yeah, I mean, it's just like Thursday night, you know, against Tonka and these guys on Saturday. It's just, you know, that, that's why we back well the late conference, um, you know, just to have these matchups and kids are, you know, you hope you're playing playoff hockey at this time and, you know, win or lose, you you, you can you can get a lot of reads off how your, your team's moving and making plays and, uh, you know, it kind of that's all every playoff play is going to be. Thanks for joining us, Pat. Good luck the rest of the way here. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Pat O'Leary, the head coach of the YZ Trojans, his team leading Edina by a score of 2-1 to one here after the opening period of play at Plymouth Ice Center again. Both teams getting ready for the Section 6 AA tournament. Edina should be locked in as the number one seed. YZ probably looking at a 2 or 3. We'll be back with more our first period highlights and then the second period coming up here on CCX Sports. Mrs. and Mrs. Jimmy. 
I came from five generations of teachers. Losing my job was the bottom falling out of my world. I already knew that I was gonna go to college, you know, from a young age. I definitely wanna major in political science. After that, I'm gonna get my law degree. Then I'm gonna come back to Detroit, boost the economy, become the mayor or something, try to make the situation better for other people. I feel like I owe it to the city. I'm determined, it's, it, it's gonna happen. My name is Justin, and I am your dividend. Welcome back here to Plymouth Ice Center. An entertaining first period of hockey. Wyzetta leading Edina by a score of 2-1. to one. As we check out some highlights from that first period, it was just, a little just back and forth. And uh, not a lot of activity until things really took off in the middle of the period. There's a shot on net there that Wolf was just able to get to. And then a nice shot blocked there for Wyzetta's Jack Siemens. And then a bad turnover costs the Hornets right there and you see Hayden Davison make some pay getting that shot to sneak through Wolf and in at 9 12 of the first period. And then they get another one as it's carried forward there Matthews then drops off a nice pass and a great move by Jack Kimlinger to finish it up. Two nothing lead for the Trojans things looking great for them at that moment and then Kimlinger getting another great opportunity a moment later Wolf able to make the save there. But then Fraga really tested. Shot on goal and then Malmquist pops the rebound in. Chorsky bringing it out front here. Firing Fraga just gets the tip of the glove on that one. Edina was part in the fun here. The Hornets really buzzing late in that period. I mean no other way to say it. They were coming on strong. But Wyzetta able to maintain the lead. The only penalty was taken by Edina in the first minute of the first period which did not amount to much in terms of uh, uh, power play opportunities for Wyzetta. So a great first period here for the Trojans. They're uh, trying to knock off their rivals and the top ranked Hornets getting set for playoff time. And we'll be back with more here from the Plymouth Ice Center in just a moment. Thanks for joining us for Lake Conference Boys Hockey on CCX. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button and from there choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. And welcome back here to Plymouth as we get set for period number two. The Edina Hornets, a uh, slow start by their standards, but after Wyzetta taking a 2 0 lead, they came back strong, got a goal, and had some more other good chances. But uh, overall, pretty good first period for the Wyzetta guys, I think you'd have to say, Dan. Oh, yeah, I think Coach Lear's pleased with the way they started out and got rolling on it. And, you know, if you look at their records, their third period's their best period. They come on strong, so to get off good and strong in the first period, uh, real bonus for them and uh, but now they got to settle down they got to the Dino woke up now what are you going to do you had to make some adjustments in between periods tighten up that defense stretch the rink out don't let it down and get continue time in your zone and uh, I think that's what we'll see in the second period out of the Trojans. One thing about these teams you know having played so many times and all that I, I think some teams that probably play Dino are a little bit in awe or intimidate or whatever but mm -hmm. the, the, the close by rivals like Wyzetta like Minnetonka that that all goes out the window these, these are just the, the guys that you grew up playing against and and that you want to beat real bad you're not uh, in any way shape or form in awe of them no. you respect them but and I think that's uh, something where Wyzetta has got to continue to play it that way keep coming at them hard not be thinking about well we got a lead to protect here and all that. There isn't a kid wearing white on that ice right now that doesn't think they can't beat a diner. Right? Exactly. Just, yeah. 
Out to the point here. Bergslund throwing one at one off the side of the net as it snuck through traffic. Now the Hornets looking to break it back out the other way. Pass toward Jungles, but Bergslund reaches out the stick and deflects that one. Now Bergslund controlling it. Dropping it up the left side here. Check thrown there on Peters. And now Jungles trying to get it by Bergland but couldn't do so. Puck knocked down and now Monet with an opportunity. Takes a slash, got a Ooh. shot away and a pad save. Wolf having to deny that one. I'm not so sure that, uh, at least in my estimation, he didn't get hit by the stick hard enough to maybe see the arm go up there. Right as he was about to take that shot. Monet controlling it again here for the Trojans. Takes a check but got it over to Kimlinger who had a goal in that first period. Matthews slams on the brakes here spinning away. But then lost it. Kept in at the blue line at least briefly there by Michael North and he does. But then Jungles intercepts. Jungles getting to center but then lost it. Bergsland floating it ahead. Boltman back to gather for Edina. And a race on for it here and Delaney will get there puts it out front but Bergland blocked it with his skate. And now Matthews. Matthews will dump it in Trojans needed a line change. I was just thinking this line had been yep. out for a while and I knew on the rush up ice probably they're going to have to stop and peel off. Thrown back into the white of zone here Wagi back to get it Malmquist trying to dig it free and does so. And it's deflected back over to toward the corner. Wagi to pick it up to center, but then intercepted there, thrown back in and right back out. Ahead here to Nick Gardner. Gardner putting it out front. It's blocked and then cleared to the corner. Chorsky knocked it down, but then there were some anxious moments as the puck was laying loose in front. Boy, they lifted sticks, they lifted sticks, made sure no Trojan could get a stick down on that puck in front. Dumped in by Davison. This pass floated ahead there to Delaney. Delaney up the left side. He'll dump it into the corner and they change up. It's obviously an in, a, a different dynamic when you have the short, you know, the change in the second period like this. You can just throw it off, throw it in, and jump on your bench right there. Back out to the point and back to the corner. Chorsky, or excuse me, uh, Rugemer there left it behind and now tried to get it out. Boltman kept it in for the Hornets and then sent out. This is going to be an icing call though as it missed Dylan Whoa. Lewis. No, they waved it, it off. And here come the Hornets in. Rising shot up and over the top by Cole Kavanaugh. Played back down deep behind the net. North took a hit and relayed back into the Wyzetta zone. Wagi back to gather it. Nice spin move away from the forecheck there. Wagi carrying it up ice here for the Trojans, but kept it a little too long and lost it. Now tipped into the Wyzetta zone. Frog out to play it there. Knocked down with the glove by Overman. And then on net there. Boy, not a smart play by Fraga. Don't throw it back up the middle. You know there's a Hornet waiting. Borlicki's shot going just wide, and here come the Trojans the other way. They try to spring Kimlinger. It comes in on net actually there. Fast pace end to end here in this second period. Not a lot of great chances, but boy, some skating and, and uh, setups that are impressive. One thing I like about Wayzata is they're still trying to spread the ice. They're making long passes. To the far wing trying to bring him free and it's worked most of the time. Penalty coming up on the Hornets. Trip. As we will get a slashing minor issued here. I think it's going to be Borlicki who will go for Edina. As you'll see right there. The turnaround. Actually, I'm sorry, not Borlicki. It was uh, Gunnar Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. Borlicki came over and picked the puck up. Afterwards, so Johnson will go for a slash. Second penalty of the game, both on the Hornets. 
Four forty two the time of the minors so we'll see what why can do the first penalty came so early in the game that I don't think they were really um, you know into the flow of the game yet and didn't do a whole lot with the power play centering pass there blocked and then Wolf knocks it aside. Played back down deep. Kimlinger trying to get to it. Now Wagi. Boy, you can see the change in the philosophy here. Wyzetta usually likes to work up top, and they're staying totally away from it after Dinah pressed them so hard up top. Kyle Mortensen back behind the net here. Sends it up to Matthews. Matthews carrying it in. He'll relay it around here looking for Fairchild. Oh. Gets away though and cleared back out of there for Edina by Grant Morton. You've got to catch that pass coming around. That's what happens. It comes back down your own zone. You've got to clamp down as a winger. Make sure you stop that puck. They return it to Berg's London now for Matthews up the right wing. Matthews carrying it in, flicking it ahead. Monet, oh, and Wolf with a huge save. Then the rebound is blocked. Boy, Matthews again with a nice little touch pass, and Monet got a great opportunity. Bergslund. Now they get a little bunched up there at the blue line, and it comes back to center. Boy, I'd like to have Matthews on my line. I know I'd get the puck sooner or later in a good position. He's really good at it. Bergslund taking the pass from his goaltender here. Looking to the front, it's tipped just wide there by Monet. Turns and fires, but that one mostly blocked by Drew Bishop. Under five seconds to go in the power play, so Wyzetta got a couple good looks, but Edina is able to kill off another one. Full strength now are the Hornets, and we stay at two to one. Matthews zipping the pass ahead now to Fairchild. Fairchild, whoa, the official went down. He nearly turned the D inside out as well. There, but <laughs> that one had a lot of activity, but no real chance out of it. Check thrown there to free it up. Hornets up with it. Now they get it to Chorsky coming up the gut. Knocked away by North, but Malmquist blocked his clearing pass. Back out Vorlicki able to keep it in and a nice little move at the blue line and it squirts away and taken by the Trojans Jack Siemens. Intercepted there why Zeta has to touch up to get back on side and then tipped into the YZ zone Fraga. Off of North and they're able to get away with that one and Siemens carrying it in. He stood up. Follow up try was blocked. Siemens gets it back. Centering pass, but intercepted by Boltman. And sent in now. Fraga will direct it away as Joe Tomzik picks it up for Wyzetta. Sending it out to the center ice. Boltman throwing a check there to stop that attempted rush. Boltman flicks it in. Club down there and dropped by Tomzik. Boy, the second period starting to look a lot like the first period here, Jay. Just kind of everything getting disrupted for both teams. Nobody can get a good flow going. Although I'd maintain that the pace is faster here in the second even than it was in the first. I would agree. Centering pass there, knocked down. Here's an opportunity. They put it out front. Fraga got the goal stick down to block that pass. And now ahead come the Trojans with Davison who had their first goal. Slammed away there. And jumps for it at the blue line and now controlled here by the Hornets. Ooh, and Fraga fighting that one off as Rugemer got a shot on net. Thrown back in, stopped by Fraga, and he'll leave it for Michael North. Oh, and a near interception out front. Ooh. Ooh, dude, don't throw it out in the middle. Ooh. And this will be an icing call on the Hornets. I'm sure the Wyzetta bench saying the same thing, only a little bit stronger even. As you can look at that shot, that one was kind of deceptive. Yeah, it, it was. It, it got in low, and, and Fraga had to kick the pad out. Well, the old knuckle puck coming in on you, changing direction on it. But uh, both teams going up and down the ice. 
And uh, just the defenses are good disrupting. No one's getting really a solid look on that except from far out, Jay. But a lot of those are getting blocked, too. Oh, and that Ooh. one got through, and Wolf, a late reaction. He had bodies in front of him, and I don't think he saw it until it was pretty deep on him. Boltman throwing a hit there. Matthews goes to get it in the corner. Keeps possession, but then knocked away from Kimlinger, and here comes Jet Jungles. Jungles carrying it in. Stops, puts it up front. Now here's a shot, and another, and Fraga making two nice saves in a row there. Now they tried to spring Kimlinger, but just couldn't quite connect. Here's Jungles back the other way, but it hopped off his stick. Monet. And Boltman calmly poke checks it from him. Trojans, though, follow up. Have the guys in the right spot at the right time. But then a puck lost in Jungles heading back the other direction here. A little soft pass back. I think both coaches are very comfortable with these two lines playing against each other. The Jungles line and the Matthews line. We've seen this matchup a lot today. Malmquist, who has Edina's goal this afternoon. Now Boltman trying to look for a tip in front there, but it went way wide. Malmquist back for Boltman. He'll shoot it again. That one was blocked by Bergslund. Malmquist. Oh, a great spin move, but then lost it. And it's flicked back out to center. Hornets with Vorlicki. Oh, spins away and left the uh, Ford checker in his wake there. <laughs> nice move by the big guy. Boy, Licky's about a six footer, six foot one, and just nice spin move and got open and, and got it back down the zone and into uh, Fraga. But uh, both teams just, you know, you can see some mount uh, the charges mounting there and, and getting away. They just can't finish them. Turn pass got away from Waggy and flicked back into the YZ zone. Frog out to get it there, send it up for Davison. And then dumped in by Nick Gardner. 5.50 to go in a rapidly played second period. Still 2 to 1 YZ. That was our score after one. We've had plenty of great end to end action in this period, but not a lot of great chances. No whistles, though. That's, no, that's I know. been it's great. Been back and forth. Here's a drive. Oh. And, Wolf the save and then it popped up in the air and he flicked it aside with that goal stick. Intercepted there by Delaney, but in, he was interrupted as he brought it up ice. Woggy sending it ahead. No icing here as it slowed down. Borlicki back to pick it up. Got it ahead to Delaney. Delaney rubbed out there by Monet. Here's Kimlinger back the other way. Trying to get it out front and taken away. Matthews being a pest there won't let it get him past him. And then sent down the ice by Delaney. This one going to be an icing against the Hornets. I think both teams were a little tired there. Yep. Delaney just said ah, I'm going to just sweep it down the rink. Get it out of here. I thought for a minute Frager was going to come out and touch it and be on wave off the icing which would have been a bit of a mistake but. Uh, yeah, he's he's very aggressive. He likes to play the puck. He mm -hmm. likes to be uh, a part of the breakout. I think that's what's made him a good goalie, though. If you can add that as a sixth guy out there to help you, that's that's definitely a bonus. Chopped in here. There's Fraga reaching out for that one, and sent back in. The Hornets have to touch up. North back to gather it for YZ. Forecheck coming hard at him. And then thrown up the rink and some rough stuff here. This is going to be an icing call, and we're going to have, I think, coincidental yep. miners yep. here as battling, whereas uh, Grant Morton and Ben Lipke, and they just kept it with it and didn't really break it up, and they're going to send them both, probably roughing. Yeah, Morton was going to the bench, hoping it wasn't call on him, but the ref called him back and says, "Get in the penalty box." And this won't affect really anything except take the two players out and coach course Giles and the staff are asking what was that all about but I think it's a good play you know they get tied up with each other let them both sit in the bench, penalty box cool off and just keep control of the game. Yeah, it's been a physical game but mostly pretty clean. Yeah. Bergsland. 
And that one actually goes into the Edina player bench. You know, the way things are going, we've seen, you know, especially when he's at his first goal, that no one's really getting a break unless there's a turnover or there's a mistake made. Uh, rushes are getting broken up. They're trying to set up offense, but the defense is so good that they're not really finishing. It's going to take a mistake or two to, to get that next goal. Bergsland trying to get that puck out and does so. Flicks it ahead here, and it's going to be an icing call against the Trojans. So we'll come back into their zone for a faceoff here. You know, I just want to talk a little bit about Tommy Bergsland. He's had a tremendous career here at Wyzetta. He's been a real stalwart. And Jay, you're calling his name a lot. Doesn't make mistakes. He's real solid, knows what to do with the puck, and he's a good, really good defenseman. Puck played by a high stick here. And yeah, he's, he does a lot of things well. I mean, he can block shots, but he can start the rush out. I mean, he just seems to make the right play an awful lot of times. Yeah, we talked, Coach O'Leary, we talked a little bit about him before the game and just what a stalwart he's been. Gonna miss him. He's a senior this year. Battle for it along the wall. It goes back in behind the Edina net. Nice reversal there to help get the puck out. Now pass on to the tape of Delaney. Delaney shooting, and that one deflected up out of play by Fraga. And Chorsky took a little shot in the lower back for his efforts. The referee's going to have to keep a close eye on it. They've already calmed two guys down, but it's. Some sticks are starting to get a little wild here. They're going to have to keep control of that. And I think guys are, are. There's a couple of deflections oh. in front. I think guys are kind of testing the limits too on seeing what they can get away with in terms of interference. Mm -hmm. Like on, you know when somebody's going to the net, they're taking the body a little bit early at times or whatnot. But I mean, obviously, I, I, most folks would agree you like to see a game where there's not a lot of penalties called. Well, and, and the clear difference here, Jay, use the body. Use it. Don't use your stick. You know, it's just like, come on, you guys know how to get into each other's bodies well, but don't chop and hack at each other or use that stick for hooking and stuff. Yeah, Bergson's back out again now with the defensive zone faceoff. Edina wins the draw. Oh. Shot and a goal. Mason Nevers using a screen to bury it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't think winning faceoffs ain't important, boy, that was a clear example of winning a faceoff and making it pay. What a nice setup. Nevers just drilled it. He waited just the, the right amount of time here, too, to, to get in position and get yep. the spot. Where he could uh, hit the net, 17th goal of the year for Nevers, and we are even up at two apiece. And Frago lost him coming across, and all of a sudden he was surprised he Nevers right in the middle of the slot and let that shot go. <laughs> Tie game. Now these are the kind of things that Coach O'Leary talked about. Now again, how are the Trojans going to respond? They went up two zip. Now they've let him get back to a tie game. You know, the next response by the Trojans is going to be really, really important and could set the tone for how they go into sections now. They need to step up and they need to get the next goal. Now they're drawing the. Oh, we got a penalty here issued to Kimlinger of Wyzetta. So the Hornets to the power play. Bergsland trying to clear it out, played by a high stick there by Edina. So we'll come back into the Hornet zone with that draw. I have to confess, Dan, I didn't exactly see what Kimlinger did. I didn't either. To draw that infraction. Trying to wait for the announcement here, but nonetheless, no, not a lot of penalties either, Jay. I think it's what the second one for Edina, and was that his head too? Well, three for Edina and two for Wyzetta. Okay. Gimlinger got a roughing minor at 14 minutes. Here is Malmquist. 
Edina looking to take its first lead here. They've tied it up at two and looking for more. Jungles across. Boom. Ooh, and Nevers, a rising shot, went over the net. Gorlicki back to pick it up. Somebody's got to block that pass, and Nevers, that, they've been setting that one up the whole game. Well, I, I can't imagine there's a team that can put a better five out than Edina on their first power play unit, really, when you think about this this group. Pass, Bergsland able to block that one. Malmquist now getting it over to Jungles. Back from Malmquist. Or Licky down low with it. Malmquist trying to go out front. Fraga knocked it away, and then it was still loose. And the Trojans able to clear it. Well, you are correct, sir. The Dan has got a 32% power play. They've scored 20 power play goals and 63 power play attempts, and that's pretty doggone good. And it, not even just you know beyond the numbers, but just the variety of skills that they have oh, to yeah. deal with. You got the big guy Chorsky up front. You got the great uh, hands and, and puck movement of the defenseman Borlicki up top, and then you got you know skill with Jungles and Nevers and Malmquist. Uh, Jungles and Nevers don't quite. They can shoot the puck. I mean, they can rip it. Back across, down low for Malmquist. 15 to go in the power play. Meanwhile, Wyzetta says, "I don't care how good these guys are. We're going to scrap and fight and kill this penalty off." Malmquist out front. Oh, Chorsky oh. maybe overpassing there. He had a great lane to shoot. No question. He did overpass. Should have shot it. Oh, my gosh. Penalty is over. Why is that a back to full strength? They've killed it off. Under a minute to go in the period as well here. Nice interception by Matthews. And then it rolls to center. Jungle's throwing it ahead. Nevers up with it. The Sedina group's been out for quite a while. Now Matthews and Nevers go at each other hard. Race for the puck now. Dylan Lewis getting to it, but Borlicki checks him. Hornets coming back hard the other way. Deflected in by Colby. Colby will chase after it. Got the pass away just as he was being checked. 15 to go in the period. Centering pass block. Get another crack at it. Back out to Boltman. And that Ooh. one trickling just wide after hitting bodies in front. Five seconds. Here's a shot, and that one will go wide, and the period comes to an end. Wow, what an ending to the period. Edina fighting back to tie it up. We are even up at two apiece after two here at the Plymouth Ice Center. We'll be right back. I came from five generations of teachers. Losing my job was the bottom falling out of my world. I already knew that I was gonna go to college, you know, from a young age. I definitely want to major in political science. After that, I'm gonna get my law degree. Then I'm gonna come back to Detroit, boost the economy, become the mayor or something, try to make the situation better for other people. I feel like I owe it to the city. I'm determined, it's, it, it's gonna happen. My name is Justin, and I am your dividend. What if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. Welcome back here to Plymouth, a 2-2 two -to -two hockey game through two periods. Kurt Giles, the Edina head coach, joins us. And Kurt, uh, kind of what we expected, really up and down, fast-paced game here. How, how did you feel about that second period for your team? Yeah, you know, it's what we expected for two periods. We knew coming up play-wise that uh, they play extremely hard, play well defensively, and they played well. 
How important was it for your guys to get that goal to, to send it to the third period tied up now? It's always important to get things back a little bit, you know, but uh, we got to get more shots, got to get more pressure in the front of the net, so we got to play a little bit better as well. Yeah, you guys had that flurry late in the first period where you put together, you know, probably a half dozen really strong shifts in a row, but it seems like it's been hard to get back to that. What will it take in the third to kind of find that rhythm again? Hard work. That's a good 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 answer for you guys. Uh, playoff time coming up here too obviously after this one. You know what are you guys working on to, to really fine tune and be ready for the start of playoffs. You no know, we work on a lot of things we worked all year. We work on the defensive side of the puck as much as we possibly can to, so we can control games. Same as YZ. YZ plays all our games tough defensively. We try and do the same type of thing. If you can play well defensively you can stay in most games. All right, Kurt, thanks for joining us, and good luck in the third and also in the postseason. Thank you very much. All right, Kurt Giles, the Dinah head coach, his team fighting back to even things up at two apiece here through two periods at Plymouth Ice Center. We'll be back with our second period highlights and then what should be a great third coming up here on CCX. Welcome back here to Plymouth Ice Center. Edina 2 and YZ 2 through two periods of play here. Let's check out some of the highlights from the second period, which, boy, it was not a lot of whistles, really end to end action. Not necessarily tons of scoring chances, but definitely some good opportunities. There you see Wolf making a dynamite save there. And at the other end, Braga tested a couple times in a row. Follow up try here got in on him tight as North put one on that but here's a face off win by jungles nevers dragging it to the front and a shot and a goal. And again Dan not that it matters that much but they call that an unassisted goal. How would the guy who won the draw not get a, an assist. On that? <laughs> you are correct it should have been an assist to the center I'm sorry just yeah. he won the face off and he got it done. Boy Fraga making a great stop there as he dyna worked the puck in the end and then that one trickling just wide. You see the shots and edge for the Hornets overall here and uh, slight edge and scoring chances as well but still anybody's game here heading into period number three and then uh, as we said these teams could very well meet again in the section six tournament they've been playing uh, pretty much on an annual basis late in the tournament these last few years. We'll come back here to Plymouth in just a moment it's the regular season finale Dina NYZ tied up at two through two. First time I tried biking and it was laying around my mom's house. And then I kept taking them whenever I could get them. I didn't know they'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth.
Edina and Wyzetta tied up at two apiece as we get set for a puck drop in period number three here. And again, the last game of the regular season. Section 6 AA tournament gets started Thursday evening at the rinks of the high seeded teams. They'll be seeding on Sunday for this. And again, as we talked about earlier, Edina, I don't think it's even regardless of this outcome, they're far and away the number one seed, no question. Wyzetta probably battling in the 2 3 spot. Well, if they win this game, they're the number two. If they can knock off the day, they'll get the number two in this. So that's kind of why it's important for them. But mostly important, you know, Coach O'Leary wants to see how these kids respond now. They went up two zip, they just gave up two goals. Like I said, the next goal is really, really big. Both centermen thrown out. And now we are underway here in period number three. Flip back to center. Boltman controlling here. Zips it across for Mason Reiners. They don't get it in deep though and thrown back out. Jungles relays it right back in. Jungles jumping up to pressure. Bergsland there got the pass away. And then Boltman standing up at center ice. Check there, knocks both guys down. And sent right back in behind the wise end of that. Fraga stopping it there for Peters. Now Matthews gaining control, but not for long. The long reach of Chorsky takes it away, and he throws it into the corner. Back out to center. Monet gaining possession for Wyzetta. Backhander on net there, and Wolf to stop. And then as they go to the net, you see uh, Borlicki getting the glove up under the jaw, under the chin of, uh, of Monet as he tried to get in on the goaltender and paid the price a little bit. And you look at it, Berlicki <laughs> didn't really try to hide it there. And I think Monet probably saying, you know, why is that not a penalty? And I think the official saying, don't think we didn't notice those couple of little whacks he took at the goaltender there. So, yeah, I think a good no call. A little allowances are made in front of the net. Always have been, always will be in hockey. North dropping it in. And I think Borlicki did a smart thing by not continuing on to, you know, yep. making it into a semi-punch there. Chorsky getting it back to Malmquist and then zipping it up to Delaney on the left side. He'll drop it into the Trojan zone. Fraga back to play it. And that long pass gets through at center ice, but then knocked away. With Gardner trying to gain possession. Gardner chops it in deep. Boy, that long pass, that long just kind of fight pass that was that has just been saving them today so far. They've really been doing that well. Colby carrying it ahead. And he throws a check to free the puck back up again. But Wyzetta able to force the turnover. Knocked away from Fairchild. Intercepted by Colby and thrown back in behind the net. And that's the way a lot of the first and second periods have gone. Just back, you know, nobody really establishing a long period of dominance. And uh -oh. there's a turnover. Jungles with the steal. Jungles floating it out front, knocked away there, and then just flicked out to center. Boltman will glove and drop. Boltman carrying it in. Now here's oh, a pass out front. My. Oh, a great setup as Shoemaker threw it to the front. Now for Jungles trying to tee it up, but that one was blocked. Jungles in the circle with it. Trying to get it back here as Jet Jungles. Throws a check and then it's thrown wide of the net. Ooh, and a serious hit there. As big Drew Bishop won that battle. <laughs> Boy, he took a run, didn't he, Jay? Yeah, now, now you're looking at a little change in strategy for a dynamo. You can see this hit coming up, and he was lining them up from the get-go. Not fair size-wise, but part of the game. The Dinas move their four check up. They're really attacking Wyzetta's blue line and really giving them a hard time trying to get out. 
trying to cause a turnover, which we just saw. The other thing we found out is that Jet Jungles is really annoying. <laughs> Backhand try here, and it deflects into the corner. The Dinos kind of started to put their stamp on this third period a little bit here. They bottled the Trojans up quite a bit in these last few shifts. Yeah, that change of attack in the, the was that a blue line and bottling him up has really worked this period so far. Look at that. Tough to get it out. Now Borlicki takes a check as he works the puck up and taken away and then it's off a skate. Play is good but Izetta not able to catch up with it as uh, Siemens fell down. Check thrown there as they free the puck up. Good hard work by Jack Schneider. Borlicki one hands it out of there and Izetta will stop it at center ice here with Tomzik. Bishop knocked it down. Now he spins away. Shorsky throwing it ahead. Wolf letting it go through there. Or Licky sends it for Malmquist. Now Chorsky. Delaney looking for the return pass. And then he gets an opportunity. Let's see. Not quite in. Wow. I thought Delaney had uh, given the Hornets the lead there as he put it back against the flow of the way the uh, puck was going. And apparently they kept it out. Three great touches there by the Hornets coming across. There's the second one right there. And then Delaney followed through and he. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> right underneath Fraga. If he had overreacted, he would have knocked that puck into his own net. It was sitting right. Near the goal line, right behind him. The hockey gods are smiling on him. Oh, and then this one took a carom and gave uh, Fraga some trouble there on the turnaround try. Here's another look at how this one wound up. As you see, it goes past him here, pipe, the post. pipe, and then his back or left leg, and that one could have very easily gone into the net, but it did not. That's where from our angle when it disappeared beyond his leg yeah. there I thought how did that not go in and exactly. it was very close. Got behind the net Colby in there working for it for Edina and then running someone over was Rugemer. Back out to the point and around it comes Boltman will send it right back down deep. Wait, nothing comes easy in this game, right, Dan? I mean, any, oh. any any little play, there's always somebody there to to bother it for both teams. Ooh, and Boltman throwing a serious check there. He lost his stick in the process. Oh, oh. here we go. Boltman mixing it up with Fairchild, and then there's also a second set of guys behind the net mixing it up where the puck is. That is uh, Tomzik and Mason Reiners. I don't believe we're going to have penalties, though. And we should. Yeah, I, I just I, I think a diamond got away with one. This is a okay shot, no problem there. But what he does is, now watch. That's a penalty, ladies and gentlemen. That is interference, and, that, and there's a second one. <laughs> yeah. You bet. Both of them should have gone off. I guess we're going to go with boys will be boys on that one. Yep. Borlicki, great pass, and now it, oh. they break it out here. Shoemaker up the right side, firing and frag of the save with Nevers on the doorstep. Well, what's going good here for the Trojans, Jay, is Frag is starting to show him that he is really stepping up to the plate here and giving him some really good goaltending because, frankly, this has been a dynasty period. There's been no question about it. Trojans win the draw. Low to the head here, Ludke giving chase, throws a check to free it up. They put oh. it out front, but just a little bit behind its intended target, Schneider. Bergsland turns, it's tipped into the Dyna zone. Gunnar Johnson back to play it for the Hornets. Nice read to intercept it by Jake Schneider. Schneider back out to the point. And that one tipped just wide as Bergsland threw it toward the net. 
Well, at this point now, the strategy is for both teams. Get pucks on net. Take shots. You know, it's one shot away from taking a lead here, and every goal has been precious. Shoot the puck. Jungle's dropping it back, and then the wrist shot goes high up and over the top off the stick of Shoemaker. Boltman throwing it toward the net, but missed his target. And here's North leading it back the other way for Wyzetta. He will throw it in and then is called off, or at least they're changing up part of their line. North will stay. Delaney dumps it into the corner. Malmquist can really go, and he catches up to that puck first. His pass, though, was blocked, and here come the Trojans back the other way. Monet stood up there by Boltman. Comes free out front. Kimlinger back to gather it, and they'll have to regroup. Loggy sending it in. Monet relaying it around. Kimlinger will play it back around again. The Trojans were changing mm. on D, though, and now, oh, they just missed from Malmquist. As he would have had a breakaway chance, Wyzetta caught in a defensive change. For Licky, with speed into the zone, drops the pass back. Here's oh. Chorsky, a great move, a shot. And uh, another near miss for the Hornets. Craig is watching all the way though he's got good position Ooh, out front there for Chorsky and he lifted it over the net and then was dumped to the ice. Here's a tip try by Chorsky coming out of the corner. Chorsky mixing it up with Tomzik as Frag got tested again here. Boy what a move. Do you think Chorsky's got some hands. Oh my gosh. For a man that size to have that with silk hands. Boy I like that. And you see oh. Dinah just moving the puck so quickly there. And Chorsky got knocked down, but he gets right back up and comes to the front for a tip. Which in Wyzetta's eyes makes Chorsky very annoying. <laughs> or Licky. Look at him skate wow. through. Ooh. And he was stood up at the blue line. And a check thrown there. Boy, things getting real physical here in this third. Controlled by Wagi. Drop back into the Trojan zone. North back to pick it up. 8.20 to go in the third. We are tied up at two goals apiece. Boltman picking it up here for the Hornets. Well, there's a line change there, but you can see a diamond. They're not is not letting go of that was at a blue line. They're going to set up there. For the rest of the game, as much as they possibly can. There's so much excitement on the Adana bench, don't you think? <laughs> I don't think Kurt ever loses his cool at all. I think he's just real stoic and straightforward, and his players play that way, too. They don't get too up, they don't get too down, they just do what they have to do. The other thing I like about him, too, they're always in position. There's always a green jersey by a puck. Boltman dropping it back and Jungle's shot was deflected up and out of play. He's had a good game today. He's done a lot of good things that you haven't noticed really as far as scoring or anything like that. He's just been disruptive. He's set up some good plays. He's been key on some of the breakouts. Matthews this time winning the draw from him though and now Ooh. Bergsland was knocked down. And flicked into the corner here. Wolf back to play it. Oops, had a little swing and a miss, but still got it over to his teammate. Now onto the stick of Shoemaker, and they'll leave it for Boltman. Boltman, whoa, a big time collision with Matthews. Matthews may be spa, but he doesn't take prisoners. Battle for it alongside the net. Puck is still loose, so play goes on. Back out toward the point for Licky. Oh, swing and a miss there by Shoemaker. Now from the circle, a shot. Frag of the stop, and now he's able to cover it up as the guys go hard to the net. That's the thing now. We, we've had so many things that have been kind of just, you know, play on, boys will be boys. Now, you know, is there going to be a key penalty late? Yep. 
They're going to have to be careful. Their jungles and, and Matthews get into it quite a bit. Yeah, there's some high sticks going on there as far as cross check, but you know it was e in an equal situation and it played out equally. I, I, good no call. I'm sorry. They don't want to decide the game on a penalty if they don't have to. Guys are really, you know, looking to take the body, but putting that extra into it now too. Every hit is just a little harder than when the game started. I think. I would totally agree. Absolutely, it's gotten a lot more physical, and yeah, this game doesn't count, Jay. Remember that. This game doesn't <laughs> count. This is kind of scary thought. Yeah, how much more intensity could there be if Ooh. they beat in the playoffs? <laughs> Cheap. Oh, and that shot going just wide as Delaney did a nice job possessing there. Malmquist gets it back to Borlick at the point out front. Oh, oh. and Delaney now it deflects in. Edina is yes, in who? front. Jorsky finally got it. He's had so many attempts and so many good opportunities. He finally put one away. You see the first one stopped and then he chops it and it flutters past Fraga. You see it bounces off a couple of bodies. It's out of midair. Oh. Fraga got his glove on it. Briefly, just, but just puck luck there and George keep doing enough to do with it. And it's kind of been the story of Wyzetta this year. That's kind of what's been happening to him. So Delaney and Borlicki will get the assist on Chorsky's 11th goal of the season. And but Dan, as look, you said a moment ago, you can put pucks on net and things like that can happen. Yeah. You, you can say, yeah, maybe it was a little bit of a lucky bounce, but eventually you're getting. What you, that's how you generate chances. A puck on net is never a bad shot, ever. We'll see what that does to the complexion of this game. I don't think. You could say it's going to ramp up the intensity because it was already there. <laughs> Three to two Hornets lead now, their first lead of the game. Well, I, I would have to say right now the intensity's got to come up on the Trojans. And the thing is, they've been they've been playing in their own defensive zone so much of this third period. Oh, that one oh. just wide. That sometimes it's it's hard to get back. And there's another goal for the Hornets, popped in by Peter Colby. And now a two goal lead for Edina. They were not satisfied to just have taken uh, their first lead. Colby able to bury that one. But well, I think your description is I mean, you look at Pat O'Leary, he's kind of shaking his head a little bit. You know, here we go again type thing. But, you know, they are playing the number one team in the state. But they have this third period has been totally Edina. And I think most of the second period was too. It just taken charge. Just a subtle little change here just kind of wore out the Trojans too and they couldn't get out of the zone with the Dyna playing high and just attacking that was at a blue line. I believe they said Rugemer and Nevers getting the assist on the goal there. The seventh of the year for Colby so a four to two score for Edina. Complexion of this one changing in a hurry as the Hornets get Couple of goals here in just over, just under a minute. And a rare icing here. Davison winning the draw for Wyzetta. And that one floats up over the glove of Wolf. Fairchild and a good control there. Now knocked down at center, but Nevers able to get it in for Jungles. Jungles spinning and then was hit by Peters. And here comes Wyzetta, two on two rush. Nice job though to stand him up by Mason Reiners. That's the thing with Edina, you know, we talked about their top end skill, but also their depth. I mean, honestly, 
guys like uh, Boltman and, and the Reiners on a lot of teams would be the best defensemen. Yeah. Whereas Borlicki, I think you'd have to concede that to him. A penalty coming up Should on Edina. Be. This is going to be Mark Overman being penalized. Well, and you look to some of the scoring. I mean, Jorsky, that was only his 11th of the year. Then you look at the last goal at Peter Colby. How many's he got? I mean, you haven't heard too much of their names, but you can see the trip up there, boy. Man, you got to keep control of your stick. <laughs> Stuff like that can come to cost you. I don't think Coach Giles is happy with that call, with that penalty. So Overman will go for a trip. Good. Birds on the shot. Wolf the stop and then scramble to get back to his feet. Well, every opportunity the Trojans get, any kind of opening they get, they got to take advantage of it and shoot. Down low. Oh, the oh. backhander goes just wide. A great setup there, but Kimlinger couldn't put it away. Now Bergslund calling for it as Edina was changing. Loading it to the middle, ah. but intercepted and flicked all the way down. And a bouncer there in on Fraga. Boy, don't throw it in the middle right now until you get all your players in there. Set it up. Get it down low. Let your low wings play it. Peters carrying it here for YZ on ah, that one taken away. Bishop able to get it all the way down. Fraga turns it back to Bergsland. Now Peters will throw it in. Wolf out there to stop it, but intercepted. Huck squirts free. Bishop trying to play it over to the corner. Now he gets to it, and he will clear it all the way down the rink. Loggy bothered there by Nevers. Two forty five to go in the hockey game what for a good portion of the game seemed like might be an upset bid for Wyzetta. now Edina has pulled into the lead four to two. Well this is almost a remake of the last game six four at Braemar where it was close all the way and then Edina pumps in two goals here to get the win. Nevers able to squirt that one out to center Mortensen over to pick it up penalty time is over Edina back to full strength. So is that a probably their you know most realistic chance to get back in it would have been if they'd scored on that power play. Nice takeaway here game certainly not over yet but they certainly could have used a goal on that power play situation. And a bouncer there Wolf directs it to the corner. Down deep it goes by Kimlinger. Look at how many white bodies in front of that down in that. Yeah, they realize at this point in the game down two, they're gonna, you know, you're gonna see defensemen taking some chances here. Yeah. Kimlinger knocked away from him. Peters back across. Bergsland shooting, hits bodies in front, and then thrown down the rink. This will be icing on the Hornets as a sixth attacker out for YZ, an empty net for the Trojans here with minute 29 to go in the hockey game. You don't love Icing the puck, but in a spot like that, when you're being pressured so much, you Dina, you got to do what you got to do there. I think. Well, in this in the high school game, you don't get penalized by having to stay on the ice. You can still make a change, which, which is fine. Timeout going to be taken here, as obviously we're down to the time where you need to, uh, I need to get everybody rested and ready, and have a plan of attack here. See, so look, uh, we said Edina number one team here in the class double A Minnetonka another late conference team that was just tied the other day right on their heels and they've had a great year and a couple of Northwest Suburban teams behind them with Blaine Andover uh, obviously Maple Grove going to be a factor Blaine and Maple Grove for the top two seeds in five double A Benilde is another section six team yep. that will be right in there in the hunt along with YZ but they could get seated ahead of the Trojans. I, I, I mean, I, Yet to be seen, but they certainly could. And uh, you see the rest, Wyzetta in there at number 16. Uh, Blake also in their section at the 17th spot. So 
some interesting postseason uh, coming up as always. I mean, we've got a lot of the same teams, but I think we've seen a little bit of, you know, shifting some new yep. teams kind of stepping up to the power level. I think of Andover as being one of those teams. Oh, absolutely. I think the other though, the surprise team, and I talked to you about that before the game started. I, I kind of like if you got a dark horse in this section, I like the Notre Dame Margarets. They are young, but they really, really come on, and they're playing very, very good hockey. You can tell by their rating. I mean, they got a lot of freshmen and a lot of sophomores on that team, but Ken paulie has got something going with them. And they did beat Wise at a six to three, so he's certainly got an argument for being ahead of the Trojans. Yep. Uh, uh, depending on how that shakes out. Oh, a save by Wolf. Rebound laying loose. Big time scramble for it, and it goes toward the corner. Wow, Izetta did everything but score there. Now the puck dies in the snow along the board, so no icing. Empty net for the Trojans here as they try and fight back. Gorlicki up with it. And knocked down, but Malmquist gains control, and he hits the empty net. Liam Malmquist getting his second of the afternoon. You could tell the wheels were turning that he didn't want to ice the puck but he thought you know I think I can hit it from here. Uh, I'll probably get yelled at if I do ice it but I'm going to try it and he does bury it. Well just Bergslin couldn't keep control of it there after he grabbed it with his glove went right to Monquist's stick and he took his time too though Jay he gave it a good look and get, got some good aim and you know that. It's a tough shot, but but a good high school shooter can make that shot. So that kind of puts a nail in the coffin for the Trojans. So it's going to be an interesting section meeting tomorrow. And here come the Hornets again. Colby shot blocked and up into the netting. Been unassisted goal for Malmquist. And so this one, you know, this is a typical thing, Dan, where you kind of maybe look at the score, uh, box score online or in the paper, and you'll say, oh, 5 2, Dinah, they kind of controlled it. Well, it was a lot no. tougher and tighter than that for most no, of the no, way, no, wasn't no. it? Well, we talk about the section coaches know that, though, but there's going to be a fight over number two and number three, no question, and maybe even number four based on this. But I'll tell you what, I, the Hornets look good. They look like the real deal here. I'm there solidifying their hold on number one quite well here. They've been very impressive tonight. And a late opportunity there as Wyzetta not done playing just yet. Charlie Podiak getting a shift and getting a quality shot on that with about seven seconds to play. Off the draw bounces into Wolf so two seconds tick off and we'll do it again. Comes back to center. It'll trickle into the Wyzetta zone, and this one comes to an end. So Edina pulling away with three third period goals to get a 5 to 2 victory here. But Dan, uh, certainly the type of game that both teams wanted to see to get themselves ready for the postseason. And, you know, this is the type of level of intensity it's going to take to uh, succeed in that Section 6 AA tournament. Yeah, and it's, it's going to be pretty much every team in that section. I mean, they're. Between these two, you got Benilde in there, and uh, you know, like I said, a few of the other ones. This would be a tough, tough section to get through. But boy, I'll tell you, establishing themselves. Yeah, and if you look at it, they held Trojans to 22 shots. It makes your goaltenders way better when you keep the other team under 27 shots, and they've consistently done that this year. And uh, like Coach Josh said, it's about defense. Wyzetta, a good job. Just again, let let a period get away from them. And uh, and I think you know a bit of a lucky bounce like I said and I wouldn't say lucky but not what you would call a clean goal that kind of broke this thing open so so they got to do some thinking but uh, they're going to be a factor in the sections there's no question about it Jay. 
So that'll do it for this one and for our regular season coverage in boys hockey. We've got some section play ahead as well here in section 6AA and 5AA as well. Great hockey game this afternoon. Why is that a strong start? They scored the first two goals of the game, but Edina ends up getting the last five, and the top ranked Hornets show why they are number one. Edina five, why is that a two? Our final for Dan Thicken and all of our crew. I'm Jay Wilcox. So long from the Plymouth Ice Center.